Welcome to Finance in Excel class number 30. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 5, click on the link directly below the video and scroll way down to the Excel Finance class section. Oh, we have a great video here. Here's the situation. We have a savings plan that compounds interest 365 times a year, but you put money in only 12 times a year, right? So you go to the bank and oftentimes your basic savings accounts are compounding interest 365 times a year and we love that, right? Compound interest. The more times they compound it, the more time we're getting interest on interest. But we only put money at the end of each month when we get our paycheck in, right? So our situation is we're going to put in 250 bucks each month. Uh, we're planning to save for 25 years. We get uh, compounding that often. Here's our APR. So the trick is what? Well, they're giving us interest uh, 365 times a year, but we only put money in 12 times a year. There is a mismatch between the N for interest earned and money going in. No problem. We can translate our APR, 8% co compounded 365 times a year, n equals 365, into an annual rate compounded once using our effective annual rate. We then can divide that by 12 to get the period rate for our money being put in. So the whole trick is when we have a mismatch between our ends, the transition from one to the other so we can actually calculate our future value is going to be the effective annual rate. And remember, effective annual rate takes some annual rate with an n greater than one and tells us what it would be if n equals to one. All right, so step one, ERA. Well, we could do it the long way, right? We saw this formula a number of times already. Well, as long as our n is not uh, an integer, I'm sorry, it is an integer, meaning it doesn't have decimals, uh, then we have no problem. We can use the effect. We saw how we got into trouble using the effect on our money tree example because the n, the n was a decimal. So no problem here. We just take our nominal rate, 8, comma, our NPRY year, periods per year, and boom, we get our effective annual rate. That's the annual rate as if we were compounding one time a year. Now, from this, we need to go from our effective annual rate to the APR for our money in. That means 12 times a year. Well, we could, we just set it up like this. We just calculated our ear. So here's our base formula. We plug in ear, and we need to solve for that. Now, you could do it longhand here, and you could see the math there. I even uh, built the formula there. <laughs> but why bother? If we're in, you know, do it one or two times to see how the math works, but then after that, what do we use? We can use nominal. Here we used effect to go from APR or nominal to effect, and we can use nominal to go from effective annual rate back to nominal or APR. So we take that, that's the effective annual rate compounding one time, right? And we say, our NPER for money into our account is 12, and that will tell us our APR. All right, so that's all of this right here, and we get that number. Now, from the APR, we need to find our period rate, because remember, if we're putting money in 12 times a year, right, 250 bucks, we need the period rate. Well, our translator from this down to something we can use is going to be Effect, nominal, and then divide by 12. Boop. Now we can solve for our future value. We're going to use the future value function. Our period rate is going to be that. Our NPER, well, we didn't calculate it specifically, but no, no problem. 12 times a year times 25 years comma, our PMT, it is going to be negative. From our point of view, it's going out of our wallet and into the bank. And comma, we don't need present value. We don't have any money in the bank account, we're assuming, when we start. And we don't need type because it's the end of the period by default. So we can just enter. And there is our future value. 
with a mismatch between our ends. Finally, it pays to figure out how much we put in in total. So we say 12 times 25 times our 250 bucks. So I'm going to apply like a formatting like that. Ooh, not like that. I'm going to control 1. Control 1 opens format cells. I'm going to say currency and then this one here. All right, so we put in 75,000, but we get uh, 238,000. All right, uh, that's fun with a uh, 365 times a year earning interest, but we're only putting in money monthly and how to calculate future values. See you next trick.